Hi, my name is Ken Gidge, and this is Gidge World. And today, tonight, this afternoon, whenever, guess what? We have something that you have never, absolutely, unequivocally, never seen before. It is a particular type of art. It's a new art form. I have, as my guest, who, it's Nancy Ferrier. She works at the Boston Museum of Science in the finance, but she does put on art shows, and she has put on art shows for this particular artist. We're going to show you some of the work, but guess what? This particular type of art, honest to God, you're not going to get just half of it unless you absolutely unequivocally see it in person, and we're going to tell you in a moment why. Hi, Nancy. Hi. How are you? I'm very well. How are you, Ken? I'm doing, I'm doing fine. Now, this artist, how did you run into this particular artist? I was introduced to him by a mutual friend. Ha-ha. And did you think he was a nutcase? Or? Uh, well, according to our mutual friend, she said, this is this really bizarre art that my friend is doing. And I was looking for bizarre art. <laughs> She's looking so for I bizarre said, art. So I said, bring okay. it on. Bring it on All over. Right. And she immediately called him and interrupted his breakfast and said, put down your breakfast and bring your work over right away. And so he did. And I saw two pieces. And I was absolutely knocked out. Uh, so, and by the way, it is 3D. Uh, we were going to start showing it. So it we is have 3D. the 3D glasses we here. We have the 3D glasses. Now, when you saw it, what was your first impression? First of all, you saw it without the glasses. What was your first impression? My first impression that it, it seemed to be um, very Asian and almost a Zen influence into it. Um, it def definitely was contemporary art, but it seemed to be very influenced um, by Asian thought. Ah. It was very, very pure, um, very uh, sublime to look at. It was really beautiful, original, contemporary art. Now, when you put the glasses on, then what happened? I lost my mind. <laughs> I started <laughs> screaming and saying, this is really fabulous. I really want to show this artist. Started screaming? Yes. And, and you, jumping around and, and you making work at a the, complete idiot of myself. You work at the Boston Museum of Science. And yes. you saw that, and, and there's a lot of things to jump around there for. There's some pretty amazing things, so it takes a lot to get me excited about something that's new and different. Okay, so I'm going to take out, we're going to start showing the art. Now, would you call this a new art form? I would, because I live in a 3D environment at the museum. We have a 3D theater. Yeah. And I'm exposed to a lot of things that involved um, the 3D culture. Um, so this was something completely different, because it takes 3D into the realm of fine art. Most people associate 3D either with 3D movies or there's a street art that's called 3D that is actually trompe l'oeil. It's fool the art. Uh, OK, so art. this is very bright. And it almost looks, in a sense, uh, almost like a flower pot. But this all looks like circles and flowers. And it tried to explain how the colors go. My, my first reaction to this, I have to tell you, is this reminded me very much of um, a recent exhibit that was at the Museum of Fine Arts by Dale Chihuly, the glass artist. And he created a ceiling of discs of beautiful pieces of glass. And when I, I saw this, I got this, this idea of the light that he captured, the vibrant colors, um, and the placement of the pieces that juxtapose and create beautiful images. Just as flat art, I thought it was really beautiful and colorful and really unique. I had not seen anything like it. And you put the glasses on. And, and then what you find is that the images not only project three or five feet away from the canvas, but they also recede into That's right. the canvas. So you get depth and you get projection. That's what I, I, I talked to the artist, and he, he said the 3D, oh, this was all by accident serendipitous. Mm -hmm. And he said that after the 3D came, what he tried to do is to get the feeling of people almost as if you stood there and could fall into it. Yes. So for people who are looking straight at this and only seeing this, they're not really seeing it. They're seeing a wonderful piece of flat art with uh, fabulous color, really intriguing color. and. 
as you look at it, it's really a meditation on form, <clears throat> particularly um, circular form, which is basic geometry and at the base of all art, really. Um, so you can look at this and just do this wonderful meditation just on the colors, oh, uh, yes. the form, oh, they come out and the they, way they, they juxtapose. Yeah, yeah. This centerpiece is just beautiful. It almost looks like an alien flower and so many oh, wow. of the, the works that this artist does does look like these unearthly flowers but once you put the 3d glasses on and i give you my reaction as i put these very okay. attractive glasses on just point at it you yeah. see that it starts projecting and these colors you can put your finger in it and your finger actually sinks into the surface you can watch your finger, finger sink into layers of color and form. And it's really beautiful. And things that you might not have noticed all of a sudden project, and they become a beautiful form in themselves. Uh, this becomes a very, very basic spiral form that's in nature. And very often what you'll see is um, this just seems to produce very, very basic artistic forms. And so it's very satisfying to look at. Wow, there are no, there are no, there are no straight lines in nature, from what I understand. And uh, okay, we are going to show a whole group of them. Uh, what should we show next? All right, let us show this one. This one's really abstract because he's an abstract artist, he as is. you can see. The other, I'm going to do a really quick thing here. The other thing that you can do, and I'm going to do it quickly so you can't see what's written is. This artist does this really amazing thing, and he does art on the back as well. Oh, wait, let's see that. Wait, <laughs> hold on. And we'll pursue oh, that. So in other let's words. Let's make sure there's no signature on that, because we want to keep him the mystery that he is. Oh, yeah, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I had is, saw that, but I guess that's, a, that's kind of a big deal if you're buying art. Yes. Wouldn't it be? The artist does something on the back also? Yes, yeah, so there's value on the back as well as the front. <laughs> Now, what I see with the glasses, I see probably like three or four colors of red going into orange, which is, well, you can see it, but when you put the glasses on, it really comes out. And this almost looks like a, a teapot to a degree. This almost looks well, like the steam. I think that one of the things that people tend to do with this art is look at it and find forms that they're, they're, your eye wants to create an image. So once you start doing a little meditation on the form, you start seeing things. You start seeing animals. You start seeing objects. You start seeing things that are very personal, um, sometimes angels. And this particular piece is very interesting because there's a lot of form here that you can meditate on. And you can find all these wonderful hidden objects. And the top of it, when you put the 3D glasses in, recesses in, and it becomes this beautiful layered piece. And uh, oh, wow. one of my colleagues said to me, it looks like these layers of pure silk um, wow. that have been sort of ripped and torn and shaped into these wonderful pieces. And it's like layer upon layer of silk. Wow, that's really, I, I like the way that is, that is said. Layers of silk. OK, we're going to bring out something that's very unusual. It looks like the artist. Uh, this is. Well, this is, uh, to me, again, as I said, this is sort of um, alien flowers gone wild. Again, we have that Chihuly effect, but there is so much color. Chihuly this. effect would be the glass? The glass artist. Okay. Um, and this one is incredible because there's so much going on with it, particularly the pieces that have blue, because there's a lot of recession that goes on with that. And this is when I think that the artist really starts um, playing with his materials and gaining control of the materials within this medium because he starts creating these more intricate forms that are floral. Um, and this one here recedes very, very deeply, and it becomes almost watery. Or you might say that it's like a glass object. Um, ah, that's a, that's interesting. That's a, I didn't. I, I, we all look at it differently. You start. You once you put the three D glasses on, you start seeing um, that it transcends the material that the artist actually use, and it starts looking like something else. It looks like fabric. 
It looks like glass. It looks like stone. It looks like petals. So tell me what you, you, you see when you see this complicated well, I, piece. Well, first of all, it's, it's almost like this is uh, the heart of it. Yes. And if you take a look at the heart, uh, is blue inside of it, green inside of it, there's pink inside of it, there's yellow inside of it, there's several types of green inside of it. And of course, the blue is blue and white, but it's the way it is done, it also goes into the green. This almost looks like a head in a sense. This right here doesn't look like a moon, but maybe it's like part of the heart that's going up there. It does. Uh, also, as you said, there's a lot of things in here when you start to look at it. Now, a piece like this, one of the things that you have to understand is that we're very close to it. Yes. So that it projects probably yes. a few inches from the surface. Yes. But when this is hanging on a wall, then you're going to see feet of projection, three feet, five feet of projection, and within that, you're going to see all different forms suspended in the air. You're looking at these things and the pieces are hanging out of nowhere in the middle of the air. So it's really mesmerizing if you can see it in person and you can see it from a distance. And then what you do is you go from side to side and you go back and forth and the forms change. So this is the wonderful thing about this art. It's fascinating flat art, but when you add the 3D glasses, all of a sudden you, you're seeing an art form that's never existed before because this has been created with fine art materials. It's not like a 3D film. It doesn't look like a 3D film. It's not a series of flat objects that go um, and project outward. It actually has a whole different feel to it as though it's different materials from the material that the artist well, started Well, a, a new with. art form when, I mean, you, you you know, if you didn't work at the museum, uh, I, I would kind of say, wait a minute, you're saying it's a new art form, but you do work there, so you see the most amazing thing. So you look at this and you're saying this is a new art form. Well, I, I spent seven years at the Cape Cod Museum of Art working with them um, as a volunteer, and I had the opportunity to see a lot of beautiful, very famous artists. And what this reminds me of is, what do you suppose people thought, thought of the first time that someone took a paintbrush and instead of doing a stroke, did a daub oh, oh, and decided oh, oh. that they were going to reflect so it's light. A, so it's like a, a, an extension of art. In other words, in years when they find out how to do this process, you'll see a lot of this. Well, not only will you see a lot of this, but this will be in the inspiration for the creation of art that we can't really even envision right now. Because you're talking about flat art, you're talking about different materials that you can use, uh, perhaps paper, perhaps film. Um, and this is probably the beginning of a whole new art movement because this will inspire people to work with projected forms other than 3D films. Well, it, it stands up by itself. If you put it up and you look at it from a distance, it, it is abstract. And when you put the glasses on, so. So when you say it is a new art form, this is a big deal. This is not something little. Well, it's a very big deal. It, it's as I was saying, it's when impression, Impressionism started. It's like who was the first one that decided that they were going to paint in daubs instead of strokes and work with the reflection of right, light? Right, right. So this is working with the reflection of light, but it's also working with the idea of projected art form. What is he selling us? Oh, let's say if this was for sale. Something ridiculous because I think if we were in New York, they would be selling for a fortune. And he's selling his pieces for be between $100 and $500 right now. And that's why I'm trying to collect You could buy right this now. for you, 500 or under. Yes. And what I'm, I'm trying to do right now is pick up pieces myself because I think this is you know, have the you father any? of a have really... Have you bought them? I have. How many pieces have you bought of this? Well, I bought a couple of pieces, um, and I bought uh, my daughter bought a piece when she was visiting from Louisville. And so one of these pieces is hanging in the office of Spalding College right now. And I'm dying to hear the reaction of what people say there. Um, she took my favorite piece, which I thought was one of his masterpieces. It was a fish. <laughs> which was a fish. Oh, I, I've seen that. Yeah. What a, an interesting. The... Did you understand what was good about that fish? Uh, well, I. No, what happened is that 
the artist had done a background, and it was the background was sort of in a Jackson Pollock. It was. But it almost looked like a 1950. And so when he put a fish inside of it, and as people can see the colors, etc., mm -hmm. coming out, it almost looked as if it was uh, in the weeds or, or... It looked like it was, it was swimming underwater. Yeah. And also the images that were projected were very sophisticated images. It actually was sort of the markings on the fish that projected outward, and it became a whole different way of looking at the picture. I understand that can't be repeated. He can't repeat stuff like this. It's only a one time. Well, I think what it is is that he works on impulse uh, ah. when he's making these. And so it's between manipulating the material and honoring his own impulses, which is the thing I love about this art because so much of the art, when, as I was working as a gallerist, I was looking for work all the time that people didn't see all the time, or it was a really interesting take on traditional um, art, because there's a lot of beautiful artwork right. in there Nashua. Is. Yes. So when I was working as a gallerist, I wanted to show people something that was a little bit different, that refreshed their view of art. Well, when you did And this. they didn't always understand it. Like this, this is, again, one of these alien floral pieces. It looks like a, a great, great huge flower in a beautiful, Vase. But this, this also, if you take a look at the others and you take a look, this looks like he's now kind of, as you said, has a little bit more control or trying to start something else. But I, when I'm looking at this, I always, I'm, I'm thinking something is wrong with it. The, this color, this color doesn't. And then as you're looking at it more and more and more, I, I just say, you can't change anything on it. No, it's really quite beautiful because they're all the, tone, the same tone values. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's all very, very vivid. And again, it's like bringing your vision into another world, like you're seeing another Oh, this, this just totally comes right out, and one of these goes right in. I that's mean, right. That's a, that's a very small piece. What, $100, $150, what do you, what do you get for something like that? I, if I were pricing it for my gallery within his range, I would price it at $150. But my feeling is that these are terribly undervalued really terribly undervalued because it is a totally original art form. And I've seen people attempt to do the same sort of thing. And were you given the same materials and told exactly how he did it, you probably could not produce the same artwork because it really is uh, the artist is obeying his instincts as an artist. And working with the way the materials move on the canvas and he's more and more manipulating them to make a specific message because he started out just discovering this wonderful method and playing with the method and as he went along he started realizing there were particular forms that he was fond of or that people were fond of. And see, it it almost sounds like he's really alone because if nobody else is doing it everything that he does is absolutely original but where does he go next? Where he goes next, I think, is to show his work to inspire people to pursue this art form because he knows that this is only the tip of the iceberg, that as people play with this material and they work with the 3D concept, I think that it's going to become much more complicated, especially what I want to see is this sort of art instinct put into 3D films because people are already tiring of 3D. Yes. And yes. it has to be a really fabulous film for people to enjoy. Yes, exactly. exactly. A 3D film. <clears throat> so what I'm hoping is that some film artist sees this art and understands that there are artistic forms and modern forms, and conceptual forms, that can be introduced into film. Now. I have no idea where this can go because artists are so creative and they can, form, they can invent all and, sorts and, of forms. And let's for make this. it really clear because you're saying play with it. What there is, there is a process in how this is done, and he's not telling anybody. He's not telling. He's keeping not, it a not anyone at all. And there no. are people who have come up with theories. And I believe that you have talked to him, and he would say. My colleague who bought two of the pieces is. Artily, and he's a serious art collector. 
um, goes to auctions and, and buys very serious art. And he was absolutely bedeviled trying to find out how this worked. And I also have an exhibits department that puts on million dollar shows yeah. and really clever people who came up and told me, oh, I know how this is done. And they would tell me and the little bit I know about it, I knew they've got it wrong. Oh my God. I mean, uh, hold on. You know, the, the interesting thing about this is why in the world doesn't he go to a paint company? Why, especially with this particular, why does, why, you know how they have like skateboarders and snow people mm -hmm. and they advertise them. If this is a new art form, a paint company would be nuts not to grab this person. Well, that's right. So perhaps I should talk to him about contacting the paint company. Um, or the glasses. And, well, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I did shoot a little email on uh, a colleague's suggestion to the company that makes the glasses, American Paper Optics. And I was, it really was a shot in the dark. These are very busy people. Right. It's an international right. company. Right. And within an hour, I had an email back from the COO, CFO of the company and saying that uh, he loved the art. He was considering on putting it on their website. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, they really like the art, and they're searching through it to see if there's something that they would like to put on their website. And he put me in touch immediately uh, with their rep who works with the museum yeah. to see if there's anything that can be done um, to promote this sort of art as an interactive exhibit. Well, it, it promote this sort of art, and the artist is not telling anyone how it's done. Don't you think somebody well, ought to figure silly? it out? Oh, they don't understand <laughs> that yet. Isn't that silly? Well, what I envision is that uh, perhaps if he could release some of the information and start a movement and, and just be sort of the father of this technique. I think this person would do that if financially, well, as you know, the artist, this is hard <laughs> as an artist. To, to you know to to it's very very difficult and the, in the beginning usually um, new art forms are terribly misunderstood people sometimes are frightened by them in this particular art form people have a problem with because if you have visual problems you can't see the 3d okay so you have to buy a piece to appreciate it for the but, flat art but if you take a look at that i want to go over this because i was looking at this closer this looks right here as if it's uh a um I don't know, a pot. But over here, it looks like a, almost like a frog coming up here. Up here, look like, if you take a look at that, almost look like groupers, those fish. Or a little face. But oh, wow. Here's the thing. I think uh, when we had this very successful opening for this artist, uh, where we basically had to send his wife running home to pick wet art up to put on the walls because it was selling so quickly. All right, tell the story about multiples. that. You, you took this and you did a show with this artist. We did. One show. One show. It was during the Nashua Art Walk of uh, 2011. And it really was done very quickly. I'm a very meticulous gallerist. But yeah. We had an opportunity to show in a great gallery space. And uh, we put quite a few of his pieces up. Oh, there must have been about 30 pieces, both 3D art and um, traditional art, um, traditional contemporary art. And what we found was that people were absolutely absorbed by it. They loved it. They were excited by it. Some people were almost frightened by it because it was so bizarre to them. But most people, as soon as they put on the glasses, I remember this one guy just sat there and he kept on going back and forth from the painting, looking at the projection change. And all he could say was, wow, wow, wow. And he just kept on saying that over and over and over again. And there was one piece and that- And how did uh, it sell? Uh, I think he sold all but six pieces. It was the most successful show that I ever had as a gallerist. And he did extremely well. And I've never had that experience before. And he so sold them really probably incredible. cheap. Well, that probably was the problem, is that he really undersells his paintings because I think these are going to be valued much higher. Now, this, this one probably everyone is going to understand. This is just 
um, I know a, l a little bit about this. This is this particular paint is very very difficult because it does itself refract. So how does that? How do you get white paint to do that? First of all, I uh, this this is a secret of the artist. Um, one of the things that I love about this is that this is a really beautiful piece of flat art. It's just this wonderful floral. Uh, in the impasto in the center is very, very heavy. It's, you just want to touch it. It really is um, very tactile. So when you put the glasses on and this starts projecting, oh, wow. the white actually recedes and the reds project. That is amazing. It's really quite beautiful. But I also noticed that most of his art, he has it all kind of, what, what can I say, uh, outlined in black. This one's just not. No, this is much freer. Um, the ones, I love the ones that are outlined in black because it reminds me of stained glass and church windows and that sort of art. And I think it's, real, it's sort of a new take on the look of stained glass. It's really beautiful. It's a contemporary take on it. This is much more loose. Um, and I think it probably expresses a little bit more freely what he's about because there are no hard edges to it. Everything is soft. Everything is very, very feminine. Um, and it's very accessible because the floral image is very clear in this one. Wow. And you don't have to make up any stories about this or find any little images. That's, that in is it. not it's true. It's just this really you gorgeous don't have to look in there and find floral that. piece. It almost looks like a, a, from a distance, I would imagine. But in people, it, it, if you're looking at this and seeing this, you have to understand you're not seeing anything. Picture it coming out about five feet. Right. And picture it about going in five feet. Well, this is where it touches on an art form that I really am totally fascinated with, and that's the Hubble telescope pictures. Ah. This reminds me very much of the Hubble telescope pictures, where these there it's sort of a mini tiny nano version of. Um, the Hubble telescope pictures that are so beautiful, and they have the most extraordinary colors to it. Nature has produced on its own yes. this sort of image, and the fact that someone is producing this. And there's so many, it's, it's almost like there's five or six reds and pinks and, and right. oranges and yellows, and then the white. In none of his work, I don't see any of the white like that, except for the blue and the white. It but really is a pristine, is... pristine white. And against those bright colors, it's just gorgeous. And if you could see this a little bit closer, you see there's a lot more texture in here because there's little feathery pieces, there's a little bit of blank canvas, and it all plays well together. And this vibrant, really vibrant pink really sets everything off. Uh, but this is really beautiful, but your, your eye wants to make it into a recognizable form. But I think what he's creating is something that's very, very natural. As I said, Hubble Telescope, that, those pictures were created uh, by nature. And it's, it's just... This has, to be a, <clears throat> this has to be a particular type of a process. If you, if you know anything at all, something is there. How it is done, we don't know. If you think of, as you said, the universe, okay, try to paint that. Right. You can't do it. Right. No matter how you try. I mean, it's just a film. This is just so bright. And with the white, he had nothing more of I've seen with white. Okay, we have got one more. And I would say that this is probably the absolute best. And at one time, he was going to sell us for $300, but I don't think he's selling this anymore. Oh, good. That's good to hear. <clears throat> have you spoken to him? Yes, I have. And you he have. says he's. He says that uh, they almost sold it. A couple of people were looking in to sell this for $300, and they didn't do it. Mm -hmm. So he put it on his wall, and I don't think we can get well, it. Well, maybe he's finally valuing it. Oh. Or heading towards the true value of the uh, paintings. All right. Now, um, why in the world? Let's, let's get it up there. This is really. Oh, this is just gorgeous. This is just a, an, another one of these fantasy flowers. And again, you have all of this intricate sort of stained glass looking images. And you could just spend hours and hours and hours contemplating this piece, which I think 
is the sign of a good piece of artwork, is that it can hang on your wall for years and years and years. You can contemplate it all the time. You can contemplate it as flat art. You can use it with your 3D glasses. Um, and it's wonderful to bring someone to this piece of art and have them look at it and see it change their perspective. And I think if people, if, if people could, if you could only see this, and you put your glasses on and you look up here into the yellow, it real and the yellow, and it looks like a purple and a, a green yellow and then a blue yellow. I mean, I don't know how these colors, and up above here, it almost looks like what, a, a starburst sort of, and down here it looks like, uh, well, I'm not sure. Same glass? The de it's almost like it's this primal flower that's giving life to this little world below it. This is the, the essence of the flower. It's creating this beautiful world that has depth. Um, and again, people have to uh, come to a gallery show where this artist uh, is showing his work and look at these things because you can't imagine the complexity once you see this portion of the painting. It's really beautiful and it brings you almost to another world where there's layers and layers of existence. You just want to step this into is just, this sort this of is, this is really, magical floral yeah. this essence is, this world. This is very beautiful. It and is. imagine somebody could have bought it for three hundred dollars. Well that's just And it's kind. gold. This is gold all over here. I'm not sure it's not gold gold but it's really beautiful. Well I particularly like this because it gives it um, almost sort of a renaissance look. It's very strange because his art sort of touches on all different eras of art. It sort of references it. So I like sort of the, when he uses a metallic background because it gives it a very rich look and it sets off the bright colors so beautifully. And it, it almost is, um, it transcends time uh, because it has many, many references to art forms that have been through the ages. So it really is uniquely contemporary, but it has all what these would, references. What would this, if you yourself own this mm -hmm. and you were going to sell it, this was yours, what would you sell this for? Well, it's really hard to say because in Nashua, yeah. uh, where quite frankly, contemporary art is a really hard sell. Um, I think that I would probably price this at seven or eight hundred dollars. 3D glasses? Um, 3D glasses, you get a couple of 3D glasses with it. No, but I mean, and I, it, yeah. And, and I think the, the fact that we're playing with these 3D glasses and it's kind of fun and you look a little bit goofy, <clears throat> it makes people not want to take this seriously. But this is a very serious art form because what it does, I think the job of art is to make people pay attention and to change their perspective on things. And this really achieves that beautifully. And one of my problems with contemporary art is that it can be so sad at times. It's really, it goes to the dark side. Yeah, and yeah this it's is sort not, of all blood and guts. This is not and, the dark side. And it does shake you up and it does yeah, make you think. Yeah. But this is contemporary art that brings you to another place that's much more positive. And it gets your brain working the same way that those contemporary artists want you to react. They want and, you to be a little bit shocked and confused. When you put the glasses on, when you there's the, another. What they see is, I think, very beautiful. It's very beautiful. And when you put the glasses on, 10 times 10. That's I mean, right. It really is truly not what you see is what you get. It if challenges you, you just like any good contemporary art form does. It makes you, it changes, changes your perspective on the world and it makes you think differently and it refreshes your mind. And this refreshes it in a really beautiful, elegant way. I just really adore this because it's completely innovative. And uh, this, I don't think he's going to sell this one. You I don't, don't think he's no, going to he, sell this? He, Why uh, did you try to buy it? Well, no, but I was hanging around and this was basically a throwaway. Oh. And I think he put 40 hours into it. This and is very typical of this too artist. Much. And then it turned out to be something that he just didn't want to part with. And, you know, when you find something art, artist does not want to part with, especially when you use the words a new art form, that what you see here, this, this will be 
five years, ten years down the road, people can look at this show and say, we saw it first because it came from Nashua. That's the right. The artist is from Nashua. And the process is just phenomenal, and nobody can figure it out. I mean, you said that you, you know, you work at the, the museum, uh, science museum, and the individual has two of his work on the wall, thinks he knows how to do it, how it, and it's not it. Well, he sort of knows he, he doesn't have it completely figured out. And this is really frustrating to some, you know, I work with geniuses at the Museum of Science, and it's really frustrating to, to know that there's a piece missing that they're not getting. Wow. They understand the science wow. of it. So, so when one says that this is a new art form, it's pretty, you can be pretty sure it is a new art form. Well, and you know, it doesn't even matter because if they were to figure it out and understand completely the materials that we use, how they're manipulated, all the other effects, because there's many, many effects other than material and process that go into the making of this art. Some of them are accidental, some of them are real intentional. So in other words, what you say, even if they knew it, you, they couldn't do what the artist They does. couldn't produce what this artist ah. does because it's a reflection of the inner artist. It's, it's his impulses, it's his rhythms, it's his feel for color, it's his feel for form. So even if someone to, were to know the process from beginning to end, they're not going to produce the same kind of art, no. which is no. a wonderful thing, because maybe they'll produce something all their own oh, uh, that's uh, completely different. Well, what the artist simply says is his great worry is that since he came up with the form, this new art form, and everybody, that's what they say, is that somebody is just going to steal it, and he's just going to be forgotten. Well, and that's sad. The contemporary way to look at art, mm -hmm. and you see this a lot with um, music and stuff that comes up on the internet, is um, there's a certain amount of giving away that you have to do, and it will come back to you in the end only because of the exposure that you have to the world now. Um, you when mean you, giving away the process? Giving away the process because it, it can only... Um, it can only create more interest in the art. And if there's more interest in the art form of 3D uh, art that uses fine art techniques, and it becomes popular and more people want to do it, then that can only help the creation of this new art form because people will want to do I guess everybody figures gallery it out shows. Anyway. Everybody Absolutely. figures it out. Eventually. And people will want to have gallery shows of all 3D art and uh, all its different forms. And maybe it won't be a flat painting. But, but maybe he, it will be yeah, something else. But he also else. says this. It's, it's, this stands alone. Absolutely. This stands alone. So if you had it in your home and it was there, it would be a nice piece of work. And then if somebody put on the glasses, then they would... Well, this is the wonderful down. confusion that people have, have with a new art form, and it's happened in every sort of art through all of the ages. When they first see it, there's something that speaks to them about it, but they don't quite know what to make of it. Is this serious? Is this something that my friends are going to like if I put it up and I tell them that they have to put glasses on to appreciate it? Is that going to be a goofy thing to do? And you have to really put that all aside and just let the artwork speak for itself. And if you can enjoy it and have a lot of fun with it, that's a wonderful thing. But what you have to do is really pay attention to the forms that you're looking at because that's the purpose of this. Is if this to, was a New York uh, gallery, you said about 800 around here, well, what do you think they would charge? Oh, no. I mean, in, in New York, you would triple or quadruple those prices. It's just that, and it's a matter in New York, and there's a so lot of eight, controversy about what happens in galleries. Three times, three thousand, thirty-five hundred. Uh, sure, and it really is a matter of taste. Isn't, and that, isn't that weird? It's very trendy in galleries isn't that, right now. Isn't that weird? He can, he, he you know, artists stop, and I, if he probably was in New York doing this and hit the right gallery, he'd be probably already well known. I, I sort of think that. Sometimes it's sort of a crapshoot if you come up with something very, very trendy that people um, really want to just ride the trend with and pay a lot of money for work. Um, this, is, this is sometimes how galleries work. Mm, mm. 
you, so you never know. You never know what's going to happen. If this were presented to a gallerist in New York, and they just loved it because it was something completely different. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you a little story. I went to a gallery show in Chelsea in New York, and I got into the elevator, which was packed with people, and many of them were gallerists, and many of them were serious art buyers. Um, and we were just shoulder to shoulder in this, in this elevator. And I had just met this artist and agreed to do a show for him. And so I sort of shouted out, but I have a 3D artist. And everyone turned around and said, what's that? I never heard of that. You're kidding me. Do you mean, do you mean the chalk artist in the street? And I said, no, that's Trump Floyd. I have an artist that does paintings that project in 3D. Oh, wow. And people were just shooting questions at me saying, but I've never heard of that. What is that? What is that thing? Where can I find that? So. Well, I think when the artist sees this film, <laughs> he's going to feel pretty good about that. I think that he would be, be thrilled that uh, people want to pay attention. So I'm still um, trying to do a little bit of outreach to New York because I think this could do very well in the proper setting and the proper gallery. So I'm hoping that we'll find someone interested in involving I, themselves. I in still this. think that this this guy should go into a paint company, because from what I understand, like that white paint alone, the expense of it is unbelievable. My understanding is that the sort of paint that he used is very very high end, which is why you're not going to see this replicated a whole lot because ah. the value of the paint itself is yeah, huge. Yeah, that's right. It's very very high quality paint. And it has very, very specific values. So that company should really pick this artist up. They probably could sell a lot of paint. Do you know what? I think that they should put together a 3D kit. And they should sell paints with the glasses included oh, wow. in the kit. And I think that would be a wonderful thing. And they're crazy not to hop all over it. I think it could be marketed well. And also and the glasses people companies. People really yeah, enjoy it. Yeah, I, I have a feeling that that, that, that might take place. As long as the artist has some say in it, I think that probably I think that's could what, be an interesting I don't thing think to he's, pursue. Uh, from what you selling something like this for two or three hundred dollars, it doesn't sound like he's overpricing his work. No, he's terribly underpricing it, but you have to start somewhere. Yeah. And I really appreciate I mean, he has said that he wants to make art that's affordable for people. And I appreciate that sentiment. And when we had our show and the art was flying off the walls and people were coming back and buying a second piece or a third piece, um, I understood that. I understood what he was saying because the people who were buying loved the pieces they were buying. It really meant something to them. Um, and I'll tell you another story. There's something about this art that really touches the good nature of people because there was a woman who came in and over two days, bought three pieces. And bought she was, three pieces? She bought three pieces. And she was sitting next to this um, acquaintance of mine, standing, looking at this really beautiful piece. It was small, but it was really pristine. And it, had, it really had that sort of exotic element to it. And the woman who was looking at it was going through a very rough time in her life. And she said, this painting brings me such peace. Oh, wow. She said, I just wish I could afford this, but I can't. Don't tell me the lady bought it for So her. the woman who was next to her purchased it for her. So I she thought it was the most pieces. generous thing I had ever seen. Well, then, then I, think that, I think Nashville has something, and I think that people should pay attention to this. And the next time there's a show, we'll absolutely, and you will be running the show. You are the, absolutely. You are the head I'd be individual. delighted to do that. I'm yeah. representing this artist and trying to find outlets for people to appreciate this uh, with the businesses that are involved in creating the art and finding galleries and finding individuals who really want to see something unique and innovative and beautiful. Nancy, thank you. <laughs> I really <laughs> do appreciate you. it. Okay, this has been Ken Gidge and this is Gidge World. Now I'm going to give you a few places that you can run across probably some more of this art. If you go to gidgeworld.com, you will find some of this art. We have put it up on the internet, gidgeworld.com. If you want to talk to myself, you can go K-G-I-D-G-E at AOL.com. That's K like in a gidget, 
at AOL.com. K-G-I-D-G-E at AOL.com. Or befriend me on uh, Facebook. Facebook. Did I forget anything? It used to be simple. Oh, telephone number. Um, area code 603-864-9332. That's if you'd like to get in touch with me. Your telephone number? People want to get in touch with you, or uh, would you have them go through me? You, you go, why don't they go through you? Okay. Uh, because until I can speak to the artist and uh, have permission to go broader publicly, perhaps they should you just know, talk to you. You know, I got something to tell you, Nancy. I didn't know really how this was going to go with you because mm -hmm. you don't do much TV. Have you ever done TV before? Uh, only for the Channel 2 auction. <laughs> All right, okay. There, there, there we go. But I think you really explained it. I think people like you are very, very important, and I'm sure the artists appreciate you. Look, we've got to run. My name is Ken Gidge. This is Ben Gidge World. Thanks. Check this Thank out. Thank you. Yep. Please look at this art. It really is a knockout. You'll enjoy it. Good. Thanks. See you next time.